Now all this stuff is exactly the same as it was in Premiere Pro 6, obviously better than it was in Premiere Pro 5 and before. Where you'll notice some changes is on the timeline. So I want to make up a timeline with some of these clips. Now I could go to File and then New and then Sequence and then you choose from any of the settings that are available there. But in fact Adobe are thinking you're actually going to load up some clips, right click on one of them say make up a new sequence from this clip. And what it'll do is make up a new sequence which matches that clip. That was a feature in CS6. They're kind of expecting you to make more of it in Premiere CC. Now having got a timeline, this is where you're going to start to notice some of the changes, some of the big changes that we've got in Premiere Pro CC. And it's all to do with redesigning the timeline. They redesigned the project window in CS6, CC has been redesigned the timeline. So you've got the same general idea for a timeline, you know, one clip goes after another, you've got video tracks, you've got audio tracks. You might notice though, no little triangles to open up the video or the audio track. So you know, I want to see a waveform here, which represents the sound of this clip. I can't click on a triangle, what I do is I grab hold of the track and just make it bigger. And so immediately you can see the left and right audio. You can also make the track bigger just by sticking your mouse over it and then using the mouse wheel, just move the mouse wheel up and down and that makes your tracks bigger or smaller. Plus you've got a little spanner up here which has got a whole bunch of options and if I click on that you can see there's all sorts of things but one of them is, is expand all tracks. Click on that, it makes all the tracks bigger. Minimize all tracks, makes all the tracks smaller. I've been using Premiere since about 1995, so I've always had the little triangle to show the waveform off. And when I first started using it, it was, oh, gold, that's really annoying. Actually, I'm so used to this now that it's lots more intuitive and nicer. Now, the second thing you might notice there about Timeline is the look of the waveform. They've done a different kind of waveform display in Premiere Pro CC as compared to Premiere Pro. Now, if you want the old one, you can still get to it. You just come over to this little stack over here, click, and you untick this thing, Rectified Audio Waveforms. And it goes back to your old fashioned waveform. I quite like the rectified ones, as they call them, because the peaks and troughs grab me a bit more than they do in this mode. But you can use whichever one you like. You'll also notice there's little things like audio waveforms use the label color. So if I untick that, then you have different color representation for the sound. Here you can see you've also got stuff like whether you do heads and tails and continuous things, that sort of stuff. A nice thing they've added in is this, which is the ability to reveal a sequence in the project. So, you know, I've got a sequence here. I've got a project with like 300 bins. Where the devil is the sequence? Well, bang, click. Oh, finds the sequence in the project. The track header over here has been redesigned quite a lot. So you've got things like the sync locks, track locks and so on. This little eye here will turn on and turn off video tracks. So if you click on that, that turns the video track off, that turns it back on again. Down here you can see you've got a mute button, which will mute this track, or a solo button, which means you just hear this track and none of the others. So typical things we've found in a sound editing program now made it in the way to Premiere. There's quite a lot of information you can put here in the track header, so I've just made it a little bit bigger. It has things like keyframes, whether you're showing the keyframes or not, and if you put in any keyframes jumping between them. But on top of that, there's more stuff you can add in. So if I right click on one of the tracks and say customize, you can see I've got all these different things that I can actually add into the track. So for example here, I've got this, which is a, an audio track meter, make more sense in a minute. I've got track volume, which I can dump in down there. I can take off some of the other stuff if I don't want it. And now you can see I've got a different track layout. So you can see here I've got the actual level of the track. And I've also got volume meters per track. Right, so you, you want to come them. in and uh, shake the okay. You've got the same kind of customization on the video side. So things like the video, the sync locks and so on, you can pick these up and move them around. I can shove these down here if I want to. Let's move everything up a bit. Now once you've got a layout that you're happy with, just click on the spanner and say save preset and give it a name. And now you can see I've got my own layout there. I can come over here and I can choose that preset whenever I feel like it. This is the kind of thing which will be saved in that cloud user profile so when you open up another Premiere you'll have the same settings there. Obviously you can save stuff, you can manage presets, you can assign keyboard shortcuts, you can delete them, all that sort of stuff.